It's 1867 on Texas Ranch House, and our 21st century adventurers go back in time, armed with a lot of optimism. I knew it would be hard, but we could do it. And spirit. The whole idea is to make it out here. They'll face mighty challenges. <laughs> All the horses are gone. Without horses, we can't ranch. We're running out of food. My guys are starving. And tiny annoyances. We are being invaded by flies. These city slickers soon discover the reality of life in the saddle. Cowboy work is so romanticized. And it's not quite home on the range. It's been hard to be at the house so much. I mean, we're, we're women. We're going to go at each other, you know? Our time travelers find that some things never change. You're lying to me now. Like challenging authority. Shut up. I'm not talking to you. Every one of you guys is replaceable. It kind of festers. Yeah. Talk about about cowboy Anders. experience. Standing Jared. right here. If he were just to let us do our jobs, things would go a lot smoother. Robbie has shown you disrespect since the beginning. There's always this underlying threat of mutiny. Well, I say, Play their hand. We know who runs the house over there, and it ain't you, mister. And the battle of the sexes. Instead of Texas Ranch House, I'm calling it Sexist Ranch House. Ignited by a spark of modern feminism. But I should be out there working, and I should go on the cattle drive. She's the maid, not a cowboy, and she shouldn't be out there doing our job and getting in our way. Yeah. And fueled by a hearty dose of testosterone. First thing to be cowboy, you have to have balls. They all are sexist bastards, every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to take character yeah. and guts yeah. to experience how the West was done. Coming up on Texas Ranch House. Texas, 1867. This is the true story of 15 brave men and women who travel back in time, daring to live as the early cowboys and ranchers did over 130 years ago. These modern day adventurers will endure two and a half months of heat and hardship, a test of true grit. But do they have what it takes to succeed on Texas Ranch House? Funding for Texas Ranch House is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Texas, an unforgiving land baked by a scorching sun. In 1867, the Civil War was over. Texas and the South were in economic ruin. But for the bold and the brave, there were big profits to be had. Millions of longhorn cattle had been left to breed unchecked during the war years. They roamed the plains free for the taking. Homesteads like these, abandoned during the war, were ready to be transformed. Adventurous entrepreneurs bought them, often sight unseen, to turn them into working ranches. In a few days, a family will move into this ranch house. Their team of cowhands are about to arrive. What do you think, Baldy? Huh? What do you think there? Look at that ranch house down there. Stan Johnston, a 56-year-old retired Army colonel from New Mexico, will be ranch foreman. In the era of Reconstruction, as the country began to recover from the ravages of war, many former soldiers like Stan were looking for employment and new opportunities. As foreman, Stan's job will be to manage a crew of six cowboys and their cook. 
It's going to be a great adventure. But there's also going to be some very trying times where we're going to be tired, we're going to be hot, we're going to be dirty, we're going to be thirsty. And that's when you really got to reach down inside of yourself and grab just a little bit more. So if you're doing your job, what you're supposed to do, I think it'll be a great situation. Stan has already met his crew at a training camp to prepare them for the challenge ahead. First to arrive is Johnny Ferguson, 21, from England. I think I'll be good. I'm gonna show these Americans what a real cowboy is. Hey! How was your ride in? It was good. Well, I'm glad you found this place. Maybe with luck we can make our fortune. With luck. Top of the day, my friend. Yeah. Top of the day to you. Joining him will be 22-year-old Ian Roberts from Arizona. It's one of those things that like you dream about as a little boy. Like you want to be a paleontologist or a, you know, a scuba diver. You want to be a cowboy. Anders Heinz, 24, originally from Sweden. I didn't have the opportunity to grow up in America. And I think that cowboy in the West is much like this American heritage. Jared Ficklin, 30, from Texas. I really think that if I can get through this and do very well, I mean, that's going to help me for the rest of my life. And 19-year-old Sean Terhune from Vermont. Yeah, I'm going to be a cowboy. It's going to be awesome. Ignacio Quiles, 52, from New York, will be their cook. I hope they like my food. <laughs> Howdy, Nacho. How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? All right, a little hungry. I'm making some grub. Howdy, howdy. Robbie Cabezuela, 35, from Texas, is a USDA meat inspector. As El Segundo, the foreman's top hand, he carries the tradition of the Mexican cowboys, or vaqueros, who were skilled riders and cattlemen. I'm very proud of the Mexican heritage. The best thing about being a vaquero to me, I think, would be, it'd be the heritage, the understanding of where you come from. In fact, early Anglo ranchers borrowed all the tools of the trade from Mexicans, who had raised livestock in the region since the early 1700s. Taking the pride that I do in trading my horses and working my cattle and roping and things like that. So yes, I would consider myself a vaquero. With all the cowboys arrived, Sean explores their new living quarters. Homeschooled in rural Vermont, he grew up with seven siblings. Good preparation for bunkhouse life. I love people. Most of the time, I get along with just about anybody really well. Um, I'm easygoing, good-natured most of the time, even when I'm overtired. This. I set my stuff down here. That's good. Yeah, this, this, and this can take you. What's like that? It's like flour. Johnny and Sean discover some surprising items in their supplies. Crotch powder. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I don't want to waste it. Whoa. Whoa. That's uh, to prevent the cheese. <laughs> the bunkhouse could be a rowdy place. Traditionally, it was built some distance from the ranch house to ensure privacy for the ranch owner and his family. With his elevated status as foreman, Stan has his own room in the ranch house. At the bunkhouse, Nacho starts to prepare his first meal. Big howdy. Yes. Pass me that, that tin right there. Yes. If you can. Yes. This is all foreign stuff to me, sir. Right. It'll come through. The cook, or cocinero, was arguably the most important member of the cowboy crew. Without good and plentiful food, work would grind to a halt. This is why you watch out for the cook. In his 21st century life, Ignacio, or Nacho, is a chef at the Institute of Culinary Education in Manhattan. But Nacho wasn't always so fortunate. In the 1990s, he was homeless for several years. You know, it's a, it's a funny thing how to deal with uh, the time period of 1867. It's kind of very similar to during the time in which when I was homeless. You know, I didn't really have a stove, so you kind of like have to wing it on your own. For Jared, a self-described computer geek, living in 1867 is a chance to find out how his Texas ancestors might have lived. All right, so this is my great, 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 
great grand uncle, Ben Ficklin, who lived a very good life. He uh, is best known as the founder of the Pony Express. And in 1867, he came to Texas to set up a freight line from San Antonio to El Paso. There's yeah. your bunkhouse, there's some place in there for you. Welcome aboard, get your stuff squared away, find your books. Unlike the Hollywood image, cowboys were usually tender in age, often as young as 16. Many were of Mexican descent. After the Civil War, their ranks were swelled with freed slaves, drifters, and even failed outlaws. When you came in, uh, you looked around the corrals and stuff, you down there for Robbie? They came in search of steady wages, even a chance to strike it rich. Our 21st century men have come to fulfill different dreams. When training for the project began two weeks ago, many of them had only ridden horseback on trail rides. Few of them had ever worked with cattle. Starting to feel just a tiny bit like a cowboy, and it's really cool. <laughs> Stan has had little time to knock his greenhorn crew into shape. From left to right, count four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one. Two, one. I'm even numbered. Boom. Two steps. Boom. Well, obviously, you spend uh, 32 years in the military, and a lot of those things uh, carry over into your personal life. At my command, get home. And you have to be demanding of people and uh, have to ensure that what they're doing is the correct way of doing it and the safe way of doing it. They got a part in here, uh, I don't know if you all have read it yet, but it's called responsibilities. And let me tell you what my responsibilities are. Stan goes over his duties with his cowboys, reading from his Texas Ranch House Handbook, a guide to the foreman's role in 1867. Your goal is to build a herd of healthy cattle and drive it to market with the aid of your vaqueros or cowboys. Your primary job is to manage the ranch crew, the concinero, the vaqueros, and the wrangler. As the head of the crew, you may assign the roles and tasks as you deem necessary. Get to know them well. Your aim must be to build a harmonious and strong team. You should aspire to gain their admiration and trust. But Stan does not seem to have the admiration of all his men. Hold off on that, Nacho. You're next here. No, it's OK. He doesn't go. Nacho, you're next. Go ahead. Okay, oh, yeah, it's cool. You're what the Texans come to call a remittance man, the second son of a wealthy British squire. While Stan gets to know his crew, a suburban California family prepares for their journey back to the 19th century. You ready for me to fire up the barbecue, dear? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Bill Cook and his wife Lisa will become the ranch owners. A hospital controller, Mr. Cook oversees a large financial operation. His challenge will be to turn the ranch into a profitable cattle business. Don't know what it's going to be, but it doesn't matter to me because it's a business. Uh, it's from what I've learned about all this, it, it, it's just like running a business, and I've been doing that my whole life. So it's just a matter of what, what the elements of the business are and, and, and how many people you need to do it. Lisa Cook is a homemaker and mother of three teenage daughters. Vienna, yes. age 19, Lacey, age 17, oh. and Hannah, age 14. There is some trepidation on my part because um, I have prompted the entire family to get involved with this. And um, so I feel some responsibility that it, that it be a positive experience. But um, to me, it's a wonderful chance to have a bonding time, have a time where we go on an adventure together before any of them leave the house. Go! Oh, it's over her head. She's going to second. Pickle, pickle, pickle. I think our family is different from other families because we have a very good set of morals that we follow. We have early curfews. We haven't experienced anything like drugs or alcohol. We haven't done anything like that. Do you want me to get Benny? No, I got him. OK. Joining the cooks is 25-year-old Maura Finkelstein who will serve as the family's girl of all work. An anthropology graduate student from Chevy Chase, Maryland, she has yet to fully understand what's in store for her on the ranch. There's a possibility that I might be 
out working with cattle, working with horses, fixing fences, doing um, what I perceive to be ranch work. But I also know that there's a very good chance that I'm going to be inside cooking, cleaning, doing massive amounts of laundry for all the ranch hands. As all Texas cattlemen have done since 1848, Mr. Cook must register an original brand to prove legal ownership of the cattle he will claim. The brands of large ranch operators became widely known and regarded with the same feeling of pride as a coat of arms. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm here, I want to register a brand. OK. Have you registered brand before? No, I haven't done that. Okay. First of all, what is your brand that needs to be registered? Um, the CR. CR. Okay. A brand was the most reliable way for a rancher to keep track of his herd out on the open range. And make sure that there's not one. Oh, are you similar? Yes. Okay, looks good. There's Thank you very brand. much for your help. And here's your certificate. Thank you. Thank you, right. and you all have a good day. Take it's care. Official. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The Cook family will soon arrive, and the cowboys are busy preparing the ranch house. <laughs> We're all going to die. <laughs> with the stagecoach packed and ready to go, they finally begin their journey with Mora to their 10,000-acre spread on the Texas frontier. It's kind of a house when we get from the cowboys. There were no uh, door handles on this door or on that armoire over there. So we don't have much. <laughs> we're cowboys, it's a simple life, and we don't have much here anyway. So we tooled some leather, and we decided we could spare four shoe nails, and uh, we're kind of making them a little. We like just a little nicer for them. Had to rebuild this bed. We got this rock on it. Uh, we soaked it. Uh, we, we soaked this bed because uh, it was just all all askew. So we put water on it, soaked it, put this big rock on there, hoping to get that squared away. Stan's got his work cut out for him. Besides getting the ranch ready for the owner, the existing corral needs to be extended to hold 19 horses arriving in three days' time. Without horses, the ranch cannot function. Stan orders the cowboys to dig post holes for the corral. The work is backbreaking. The earth baked dry by temperatures regularly over 100 degrees. He wastes no time in asserting his authority. Johnny. Yeah? Grab your water. Why? You might need it over here. You might get thirsty. Come on. I mean, we're doing this. I need your help over here. But this is a two-man job. We actually can't do this by ourselves. Johnny, I need your help over here. Go ahead, Johnny. Now, I've had a few minor fracases with Stan. He's got a very strong personality. Great. Johnny is the product of a British boarding school and played polo for his university. I have quite a forceful characteristic in me as well, which means I'm not just going to do what people say. I don't want to follow blind orders. I want a reason behind them. In the 19th century, wealthy English families often sent their younger sons to America to make their own way in the world. Now put some weight behind it, buddy. Yeah, I've been quite busy all day. Maybe set your, take your water off, set it down over here so you don't have it on your shoulder. The water's not too heavy, to be honest. Well, it all adds up, so I'm trying to tell you. You don't believe that, huh? I just want to get it dirty. Yeah, let me have your water, John. Take your water off. Okay? Hang it right over here. That way it's not in your way. Yeah. Okay? Makes work easier. I don't think that's really fair, to be honest. How's that? Well, I just spent two hours making that table. Yeah, I know. Those and yeah, it's quite those, nice to finish a job without. Those guys spent two hours digging pence pokes. What do you think's harder? Well, I don't think you realize how hard it is to cut a piece of wood. Or well, for, a, I don't know, two hours yeah. on stop. Don't thought so far away, son. Like I was telling him out there, we don't 
get to do what we want to do, we do what needs to be done. Like there's a hell of a lot better things I'd rather be doing than raking and hauling rocks, but it's gotta be done. I just think it kind of shows a bit of lack of respect to not let me finish the job I was doing and then give me no leeway at all, which I don't think is a good way to lead people, to be honest. But I'm gonna go with it for a while and see if he changes. Some of the guys thought, well, it's getting too hot to work. Well, it's not too hot to work. You can get a couple of guys out there uh, doing post holes two at a time and then send another two out there and another two out there and it's not too hot to work. I know it's not too hot to work. Eventually, the day's hard labor comes to an end. Oh, I can't believe that I'm finally here with all the guys and we're about to start this, this crazy, incredible adventure. Hopefully we'll get to start riding horses here soon because so far uh, uh, it's just been work. It's been a pretty intense day, to be honest. I'm feeling pretty shattered. Hey, uh, the colonel left those uh, tools there. They were left outside. The hard work meant that most 19th century cowhands retired in their late 20s. As they bed down for the night, our cowboys begin to consider some of the hazards they face. I do have fear of being out there and something happening, and it's an environment that if you know you go down by yourself miles away, that could be it. But I've got trust and faith that you know we'll all make this through. You know the word they call it out here? They call it try. I have the try to make it all the way, so I will do my best. Today, the Cook family will arrive. Anticipation grows as the cowboys scramble to clean up the ranch. There's still a lot of work to do, but uh, we're just about there. Got some cold water for them. And of course, down at the bunkhouse, they've been doing a lot. But uh, I'm excited about the family coming in. I'm, I'm real excited about them coming in. I'm not too nervous. Uh, and I guess I'm not nervous because I know that this place looks a lot better than it did. Yeah. <laughs> Nacho is busy preparing a welcome meal to share with the ranch owner and his family. Well, they're gonna basically eat what we eat, but uh, we're gonna try to make a salad today also, because the garden is actually giving us some um, uh, produce, so we're actually happy. Yeah, I'm gonna miss being by myself to a degree, but no, that'll change when they get here. It'll just have to, because it's his house, and I'm, I'm just kind of, uh, staying in it. Most of us are hoping there's going to be some ladies. I'm expecting middle-aged guy, his wife, a couple of kids, probably younger than everyone's been dreaming about, but I don't really know. Regardless, I'm just going to give myself a little tune up here just to be on the safe side in case there are any young dudes. In 1867, the stagecoach would have been Mr. Cook's only means of transporting his family across Texas. Departing from a stagecoach station in San Antonio, their journey of over 500 miles would have taken more than a week. Somehow, I think we're going to die. <laughs> it was an uncomfortable and dangerous ride. Stages often traveled with outriders to protect them from hostile Native Americans and bandits. The cowboys keep a vigil for the family. Who's got the best set of eyes? Who's got the best set of eyes? We've got two of them. I can see the ranch. How do you? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. There's nothing there. Yeah, there is. When we came around and we saw the, the ranch out in the distance, I was like, that's our ranch. Oh, oh, look at the ranch. Look at the ranch. I can't see. Oh, oh my word. Oh, 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 o
Okay, boys, grab that cart and let's go meet them. Stagecoaches drop passengers at designated points along their routes. The Cook family will have to walk the last mile to the ranch. There it is. It's heavy. What do you think, babe? It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's dangerous. I'm looking for a gentleman named Stanley. That'd be me, sir, Stan Johnston. Bill Cook. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Pleasure to meet hey, you. Stan. Welcome. How was your How was your trip? Very nice. Thanks. Good. Think you can give us a hand getting some of our stuff up? You bet we will, sir. You bet right. we will. We got a parcel oh, parcel of folks here. Yes, How do you do, do ma'am? Stan Johnston. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Well, you all got quite a bit of stuff up there on the stage? We did. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> These all the help we can get. Well, let me get you all Thank up to the time. house, and we'll start getting it up there. How's okay. that? Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Probably would you, uh, Hello. Hello. Stan fails to introduce his crew to the family. When the family first arrived, we were sort of passed by as the Cook family and as us guys crossed down the road. There weren't really any formal introductions. Hope you all will join us for supper. Yes, be thank you. Here it is, girls. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm blown away. You can sit down here in the shade. All right. And then the kitchen is uh, down here on the far right. And then there's a there's a uh, bedroom back here in the back. Okay. And then my room's back over here on the right, back behind the kitchen. The Cook family will be living in relative luxury. A five-room adobe with a covered patio and front porch will be their home for the next two and a half months. Oh, my word. Oh, uh, it's huge. I'm really, really excited about being the rancher's wife. Oh, what a wonderful, cool place. Look at the bathtub. A wash basin. <gasps> this would be like a living room. Oh, what a I am really excited about setting up household and making life good for the men who are going to go out, do their thing, and come home exhausted and tired. I would not want to be in their shoes. Relying on this, I think it's uh, Texas Ranch House 1867. Let's find out what I have to do. As mistress of the ranch, Mrs. Cook will manage the domestic work of her daughters and her girl of all work, Mora. Traditionally, ranch wives would also work to nurture harmony within the entire ranch community. All hands on deck. <laughs> it's not going to be easy, ladies and gentlemen. I have a feeling that my challenge will be not being perceived as the tyrant. <laughs> I guess what I might impart to the ranch um, is one of a strong expectation that everybody pull their weight. Um, I don't think anybody can sit back and not contribute because then the ranch suffers. So I'm hoping that we really bond as a whole community. You are the eldest daughter of the Cook family. Your family's future hinges on your ability to pull together and build a new life on the cattle range. Your mother counts on you to assist her endeavors and looks to you and your sisters to help support the family. Your comfortable lifestyle in San Francisco is gone. I think I can say I'm the practical one. Being the oldest can be hard sometimes because I feel like I have more responsibility than they do. Well, these aren't fully against the wall. Well, how close are they? See? Told you. It's only I'm the artistic the one. I love reading and writing and filming and singing and dancing and all kinds of areas of performing arts. So I think um, I can be a little bit Emotional sometimes. Well, how is it compared to this one? Like, are they the same length? It looks, this one actually I think is a bit longer maybe. That means. Because then this one could go here. Right. And the longer one could go on that side. So we should get a guy to help us. Yeah. But we'll wait till we get other things settled yeah. before we try to set these things up and create more catastrophes. Ladies, before you go planning on getting a guy to help you. Yes. We were just, we were just brainstorming. Good, you're gonna wanna get me to help you. And if I need help, I'll get the guy to help you, okay? Just just want to remind you of that. Okay. What is that rock for, by the way? I, have no I idea. don't know. It was just here. You want it going? Yes, please. I'm going to take this rock and move it. You don't need this it's rock. It's quite heavy. Hey, get, hey, Dad, guess what? What? We have croquet. Croquet, huh? Uh huh. Under the baking midday sun, the cowboys unload the family's many possessions. 
they are starting to realize their lowly status within the strict ranch hierarchy. Basically, we weren't introduced or anything. We just were told to go get the luggage, so we did. We probably walked by a mile, a mile and a half at pulling all their luggage. <laughs> After Stan's oversight, the cowboys make their own introductions. How you doing? I'm, I'm Mr. Cook. I'm Johnny. Johnny. How you doing? This is my wife, Mrs. Cook. Hi, how you doing, guys? Nice to meet you. Ian. Ian. Ian Robert. Yeah, nice to meet you. Big howdy. Big howdy is what they call me. Mrs. Cook. Hello, nice Hi, to meet nice you. Hi, nice to meet you. Your name again? Uh, Sean. Sean. They call me Big Howdy, so Big howdy. it's your okay. pick. Great. <laughs> we'll, we'll just go ahead and finish the rest of this off. Thank we'll you so much. How's it going? Much. Thanks a lot. How was your trip? Is it good? Good trip. Sure good to be here. Give it a little bit of time here to kind of get adjusted. Just to soak it in. Yeah. I just feel like I'm here. I feel like it's 1867. I do. I'm in a car. It does. It feels like 1867. It's amazing. We met the ranch family, and I think, basically, they don't look like they know much about ranching. But then again, I don't look like I know a lot about disco dancing, but I'm really quite good at it. I'm fixing the mattress, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cook's mattress. I believe that's my bedroom, the kitchen by the hearth. And I think that that will really help me embrace my role as a girl of all work, which I understand is the lowest ranking member of the ranch community, um, second only to Howie the dog. Wow. Yeah, I'm coming. Domestics, like Mora, were often Mexican girls hired locally, or single relatives who traveled out with the ranch family. We could have a big party and feed a lot of people. I know. Miss Cook and I dance between being friends and being a mother-daughter team and being the lady and her servant. And I think that these are all roles that we're going to experience this summer, and they're all roles that are going to cause some sort of new experience for both of us that we're not totally comfortable with because we are essentially strangers and I'm very different from the daughters that she's used to and I hope that that doesn't cause unbearable conflict for either of us. And one of the things I want to make sure you're, you're telling your boys about is that I got three daughters that I protect and care for dearly. Mm -hmm. So I want their honor to be uh, guarded accordingly. Well, if you'll give me the uh, ground rules and the off limitaries yeah. and stuff, I'll enforce it and yeah. I think they'll abide by it. I get a feeling of great joy thinking that I'm going to be the boss of this operation. I don't have anybody telling me what to do. I don't have to worry about something I might say that could be interpreted the wrong way. I get to lay down the law and determine the culture and, and the rules of, of how to operate the ranch. Yeah, the ones that we have animals in right now, we went ahead and made some leather latches. My initial impressions of Mr. Cook are that he's a businessman and uh, he's interested in the business aspect of, of, of this venture. Okay. So I was trying to get some chain in here. Mr. Cook's partnership with his foreman, Stan, is key to the success of the ranch. When I first got here, the first thing I observed that as far as the colonel and I getting along, we got along great. Uh, we're similar of age. He's, he's an ex-military guy uh, of 32 years, I believe, uh, retired. And uh, I'd spent a couple years in the military, but I kind of understood how he thought. And so as the ranch owner, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to get in the colonel's business about how he ran the ranch and, and the hands that go with it. I got the boys that can gather the cattle. If we just had some horses, we could go start finding them. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done around here before we're ready to go out full bore. Like yeah. We gotta get this thing working yeah. and stuff. But uh, uh, I think there's gonna be plenty of cattle out here. And uh, I think you'll find that the guys will work hard for you. And if not, then my boot will be in their butt. Got the family in now. Uh, we'll see how that develops. Uh, they seem nice enough, uh, pleasant enough. Hope we'll get some horses to be able to ride and uh, go get some cows. Longhorn are the descendants of cattle first brought to the Americas by the Spanish in the 1500s. Hardy enough to thrive in the extreme Texas climate, they bred freely, and by 1867, several million maverick longhorn roamed the open range. 
Mr. Cook's challenge is to claim as many Mavericks as possible and sell them at a price high enough to make a profit. But until the horses arrive, the operation is at a standstill. What's next? Well, I think uh, let everybody cool off and uh, get a little water and then uh, maybe go out there and see if we can't get another two or three holes dug today. Even though the cowboys have spent hours unloading the Cook family's possessions, Stan keeps them digging post holes in 100 degree heat. A glass of iced tea with real ice and would be real nice. Sweetened and just a dash of lime would be great. Probably the hardest day we've, we've gone through so far. I think we dug out 13 posts, which is absolutely ridiculous because we started digging again the hottest part of the day, thanks to the Colonel. And uh, so it was just overall very hard. And then lugging all that luggage for the, the ranch family you know, a mile each way, it's a pain in the ass. The chores continue. Sean's been sent to pick greens for tonight's communal dinner. A lush garden has been planted that could yield enough to supply the entire ranch community. But how the produce will be distributed will be at the discretion of Mr. and Mrs. Cook. I'm picking lettuce mainly for the salad that we're gonna have tonight with the new family. And to be honest with you, I don't know whose garden it is now, theirs or ours. It's, I guess it's theirs, being the, the owners and everything. And I don't know what kind of access we'll have to the garden from this point on. My guess is that what we'll eat as cowboys from now on will probably be just mostly, uh, you know, the regular beef and biscuits and beans kind of thing. OK, they got goat cheese. And they got that. Put the biscuits in this bad boy. Put them on his way. Kept it pretty simple. Dude, they'd like us all to come down. Yes, sir. And uh, like for you to come down too, present them with their food. Sure. And then uh, everybody, they want everybody, they want to make introductions. Oh, very good. And that way, then we'll get everybody to carry something down, and then Excellent. you can tell them what they got for supper and stuff. Excellent. The cowboys carry dinner over to the ranch house. Not sure. Did you tell them what they had? Uh, yes, they got a little mixed green salad here with some radishes, and it's got uh, scallions, and it's got a little vinaigrette on it. And you got the beef uh, on a bed of mustard greens, which are kind of spicy, but I think you'll like it. It'll help you sweat a little bit and cool you off at the same time. And we got some cowboy beans here with some jalapenos in there, and then hopefully you like jalapenos. We got queso fresco and goat cheese here. We made it fresh this morning. And some biscuits, hopefully they're not too burnt. You can sure use a good meal. <laughs> I'm sure you had a long trip. The cowboys had expected to eat with the family, but Mr. Cook decides they prefer to eat alone. Have good night. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us safely to this wonderful place. Uh, we ask you to bless this food to our bodies and give our thanks to the cowboys for providing it. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. I would say work with Nacho become good partners with Nacho about the food products we have around here. Well, I was going to ask you, do you think that we could arrange maybe for me to meet with him in his kitchen? Maybe Maura and I could meet with him in his kitchen area and learn how he's set things up and... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't know how closely we're going to be able to associate with Mrs. Cook, Mr. Cook, his daughters. I'm hoping that we'll be able to be on a real personal basis with them. The 21st century just kind of seems like a distant dream. It's Sunday, and the Cook family has decided to hold religious services on the ranch. Everyone has been asked to attend. Sure. 
Well, welcome to everybody. Thank you. This is our um, first Cook Ranch worship service. Remote and isolated ranches only had limited access to priests or preachers. Ranch owners would often conduct services themselves. The best way to know yourself is to know the ones who came before you. We have an opportunity to know the ones who came before us. And I know in my case, um, my great-great-grandmother born, was born in Texas and raised her family and made her way. And the fact that she survived it and her kids survived it and their kids survived it means I'm here. I come from pretty good stock. Every single one of you who are sitting here come from really good stock, people who made it. Just know anything that you accomplish here, anything that you're doing during the day, that's because somebody came before you and they could do it and I know that you can do it. They know that you can do it. What the cowboys do know is that they have a lot more work to do. If you pace this off and just see how close we are to 10 foot. The horses will arrive in two days, and the corral is far from finished. Jared's been left in charge, but not all the cowboys are taking the job seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, nothing else that you can now post his find to do with yourself to keep busy. You just mark and you don't need four people to mark. Yeah, but I don't need two guys playing grab ass over here either. Lieutenant uh, Colonel, you got it. I think that Jared tries too hard to step up and take a leadership role, which none of us respond to at all just because the way that he does it is very similar to Stan and uh, his nickname at camp is Lieutenant Colonel. So, and he hates that. Oh, you're gonna do me that way, huh? You can grab ass when we want to. Come on, guys, we're trying you're to get marking, a job done. You're marking, you don't need four people to mark. I don't need a post in my head either, Ian. If you get a post in your head, then say it. Keep working, man. Don't worry about us. Come on. Do it. All right, keep going. We'll supervise you, then. <laughs> All right. You want to be in charge? Go ahead. All right. Fine job. Mark, right, go ahead. As I'm in charge, I'm pointing you to finish. That's what I thought. That's the type of courage it takes to lead. Now, when I say something, I don't want you, to, I'm not being mean. I'm not asking you to do it because I want you to do it. It's just because it's what we got to do, all right? You said the first day that if we, you know, if we should say things to you, that's all I'm doing now. Because I'm giving you the honor. I'm giving you the honor and respect to that. So since you put me in charge, I'll do this. I didn't put you in charge. I said, as I'm in charge, I point you to do that. Sometime in the first 20 minutes of hole digging, um, Ian called me the colonel. <laughs> I have to say, I was a little hurt. <laughs> but not because I felt it was an insult. To me, it was like, OK, obviously, you think I'm in charge right now. But because he thought it would be a dig at me. <laughs> Since the earliest days of ranching, cowboys have looked down on any work they couldn't do on horseback. And the Cook Ranch cowboys are no different. There's a corral going. I saw you guys out there to say. Oh, we're, we got one more post hole to dig. One more to go? One more to go. All right. I believe. It's, All right. And then. Uh, That's a milestone. We got to have one of those. I think uh, Jared came up with an idea of uh, some gates and. Uh, the guys have worked real hard on it there. I know, it's, it's, uh, it's hot out there doing that. After days of digging holes and sinking posts, the cowboys still have to attach the fence rails. It remains to be seen if they can complete the corral in time to hold the horses. The women are also getting a taste of the harsh realities of ranch work. Even though they had matches in 1867, they can't get a fire started. I'm terrible at the fire. <laughs> we are just barely getting our feet wet in terms of what it's taking to pull the house together. What did you do? I don't know. I put some sticks in there, and it turned into coals. I just realized how all of us, at least in my family, um, this is a totally different demand physically than what our everyday life would be. I mean, my husband sits at a desk in an air-conditioned office, and, and I'm at home, and I'm doing things, but I mean, it's definitely not anywhere near as strenuous as this. Thank you. It just seems like the fire all around just should be bigger to start with or something. 
Well, it is, but then it doesn't get tended. I can't believe it's so hard. <laughs> At the bunkhouse, the cowboys enjoy a siesta and a chance to complain about their foreman's stand. At the colonel works before he used to just kind of sleep and then come out for a couple minutes and make sure we're still moving and then go back. Now he, uh, he works every time he sees the ranch owner, and then he goes to sleep. So he comes out for a good 20 minutes a day now. So that's a, a plus. I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that, uh, that I'm making the calls down at the bunkhouse. But I'm also not naive enough to know that there's not a certain amount of sniping going on. In the military, when you got to go out and do a mission, that's when you want everybody pulling together and they can bitch and moan and complain all they want until then. Instead of using their free time to repair saddles and other tack, our cowboys feel a need for modern comforts, like leather pillows and slippers. We're taking special orders. Aren't they cool? Made myself a hurricane strap today. Did a little leather work here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a dragonfly symbol, I decided. And I was really reluctant to put holes in my really awesome hat, but I just had to because the wind's been blowing a lot lately and the hat just comes right off. It's really distracting. You can't get anything done. As far as the crew is concerned, uh, I haven't really been able to too much assess things. I'm getting some somewhat conflicting information about uh, who's, who's pitching in and who's not pitching in, who's got the right attitude uh, as far as hard work and so forth. They're energetic at times, but some of their energies are being focused on, on play instead of producing something. He's got me. The tiger's got me. It's got me. Oh, no. Oh, I can't make it. It's got me. Duh. Some of the kids are pretty young, kind of immature. We'll see. We'll see how they come along. The cowboys have managed to finish the corral just in time. The horses are on their way. Colonel, want to get those men rounded up? We got a herd of Ramuda coming over the hill here. We're going to need them to uh, help put them away. Hey, Ian. Get the boys. Tell them we got our Ramuda coming over the hill. We got to pin them up. Need everybody. Real quick. Let's go, Johnny. Get your hand on it. Let's go. Let's get ready to work. You guys, bring a couple of lassos in case we need them. The remuda of 19 horses represents one quarter of Mr. Cook's outlay. He's paid $460 for them. At today's prices, they're worth $50,000. Each cowboy gets to pick three horses to ensure no one horse gets overworked. These ponies, do you? Nope. In fact, the Spanish word remuda means change or replace. The cowboys are familiar with some of the horses, having ridden them during their training. Robbie picked you out a horse. According to ranch hierarchy, Stan allows Robbie to make the first pick. I'll take Bravo. I'm going to take the roan horse. OK, Anders, you got yours picked? Slim, which one did you have? Indio. Indio? Ian, which ones you have? Brownlow. Brownlow? You're up, howdy. Yeah, I'll take Hammer. OK, Hammer. Which This is uh, butter here? Yep. Put the cook down for butter. Johnny hasn't gone up yet. Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. I'll take Traveler. Traveler? I've got some notes on some of these horses there in the house, but I can't remember all of them. I can't remember all of them. Bravo, the one that Top Can got. He'll go all day, though, but he's a younger horse. Robbie picked him first. And as the Top Hand, I wanted him to get his choice. And that's, that's why he went first over me. And uh, that's just a sign of respect I have for him. Because I'm I'd sure he'll appreciate because that. Because I'd have taken that horse <laughs> in the end. I think everybody here would have taken that horse. Well, they think they want him. So that's too, yeah. much, that's too much horse for a couple of those boys. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, a couple of boys got their feelings hurt now. They didn't particularly like the pecking order, but that's that's just the way it is. I fully suspect that we'll be changing some horses around, balancing them out, and 
Some people are going to like how one of them rides and how the other one doesn't. Slim picked a pretty good horse, that, uh, that Indio. That was going to be my second. I was looking at that horse, too. That's going to be my uh, second pick. But uh, I just want to try that wrong one out first. Uh -huh. And you know what? When it all comes down, Slim may not have that horse. I might have it. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> but all right, sir. That's kind of what we got cooking right, right well, now. We're good news. We got our, check them all out. Got our stock now. All right, sir. I think if you asked around who Stan liked the least, you'd probably get a pretty unanimous answer. And I think that was probably reflected in me being last choice for the for the horse picking. However, saying that, I'm actually quite fortunate. I could pick two two pretty good horses. I don't know how, but I ended up with two pretty good horses, so you know, things will have a way of working out for the battle. To succeed, our cowboys will have to develop a close working relationship with their horses. Cowboy legend says that however tight-lipped a man may be, he revealed his secrets to his horse. I was delighted to find out that nobody had chosen Hammer. Hammer is a very energetic horse. He's got a mind of his own in some respects. He's going to take a lot of work. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to have a chance to ride him, uh, see what he does, um, see how he responds, and hopefully it wasn't a bad pick. Before real cowboy work begins, Mr. Cook summons his hands to make an announcement. Every ranch had its own set of rules. They were usually simple, and the penalties harsh. Gambling, drinking, or fighting would result in being fired on the spot. Mr. Cook lays down the law to his crew. What I want to do is go over with you. This is the beginning of our first full week together. What I want to do is go over a few rules. I'm looking for truthfulness. I don't want anybody telling me lies or telling the colonel lies. Or If something happens, you own up to it, you tell the truth. That's a big deal to me. I'm also looking for initiative. Whatever it is you see, it needs fixing, fix it. If you need help, ask for help. If you see somebody else who needs help, offer to help them. And the final desired attribute I'm looking for is, is, uh, is how you relate to the family. Address the, the, the young ladies as Miss, or in the case of my wife, as Mrs. Cook. Um, and followed up by yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. That's, that's protocol. I'm looking for that. This is what'll get you fired. If you're lying, that'll get you fired. Failure to show respect to the women of the ranch, that's something else that'll get you fired. Or anybody who uh, displays laziness, that's what kind of stuff will get you fired. After days of manual labor, the cowboys prepare to go out on their first horseback ride. But their inexperience with horses shows itself immediately. Was that? Sean's, he had him tied up. It was just one of those stupid mistakes that you make. And those are the types of mistakes you can't afford to make out here. I had tied my horse wrong to the hitching rail. So when the colonel's horse pulled back, he turned loose. My horse was tied, so all he did was rip the hitching rail out. Tie a horse off. One of the guys had tied up his horse on the uh, hitching post improperly to where the horse couldn't pull away from it. And as just about as we were getting ready to go, horse got spooked and pulled and tore apart the hitching post, pulled out both posts and tore it apart. So that particular hand uh, was pulled aside by the colonel and uh, given a lecture. Sean, you need to get two new posts. Build us a new, uh, new hitching post, please, sir. You guys have a good ride. As punishment, Stan bars Sean from the ride and orders him to repair the hitching post. I try to look at myself in this group, and uh, I don't know if any of that group would say I've come on hard or not. If they would say that, they don't know Stan Johnston. Don't worry, Sean. It's not the end of the world. I know. They can't eat you, I tell you. A little bit more. We finally got our horses, and you know, we were about to take them out for the first time and see the, see the country. There's some significance to that first ride, you know? And, uh, and so I'm disappointed that I'm not going. I'll take my 
Two miles from the ranch, the cowboys make a welcome discovery. You know, it's nice just to let loose every once in a while. I think that some of these guys take it too seriously. When the horses arrived, it was like a new beginning. To me, it's like, all right, game on. I think this experience is both an adventure and actually living in the times. I think the whole concept of it is to enjoy the experience, to feel what it is like to be a cowboy. And I think being a cowboy in itself is quite an adventure. But cowboy work was not about fun. In order to claim enough free roaming cattle, the boys will have to ride long and hard. Mr. Cook needs to build up a herd, find a buyer, and sell at a price high enough to cover his many debts. Everyone will need to pull their weight and work together if they are to keep their heads above water. 